to order. Welcome. Uh, I'll declare a quorum. We do have, even though we're one short, we do have enough to uh, uh, have a quorum. So we'll go on to item number two, and that is our prayer. And we'll go with our senior ch senior chaplain in emergency management, Dave Fair. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, everyone. I trust you have a good weekend. Did anybody get any rain? Maybe a few draws. Not yet. Uh, quickly, when somebody says quickly, that used to be. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of government entities around the country that are in disunity, and it's hurting the citizens of those places where it's happening. You know, you can take a rope, a single strand rope, and if you can figure out, you can actually make a single strand rope. But if you weave two more strands in it and make it a triple strand rope, it's almost impossible to pull that apart. And that's the way it is in having unity uh, among ourselves uh, when we have jobs to do it's much harder to disrupt something if we have those pieces interwoven. So in the sense of unity, I'm going to ask you to rise, if you would, and let's pray the Lord prayer together. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Yes, sir. A lot of you don't realize Dave comes every Monday on his own time, volunteers, to come up here and pray for us. So, Dave, we do appreciate it. Yes, sir. It's an honor to be here. Sometimes we're in such a hurry in here, we may not say thank you every time, but please know. Thank you. All right, item number three is citizens' comments. Uh, I don't have anybody signed up to uh, speak. If she's going to take my picture, I'm going to sit up straight. <laughs> Slouch in my case. Uh, and then, uh, okay, so item not, no one has anything they want to speak about, correct? All right. Uh, item number four, consideration approval of any treasurer's or auditor's reports. There are actually two uh, that should be in this work. I saw her handing some. She laid something down here. Which yeah. Gary's had to deal with the investments, but Gary's unable to be here. So we going to do them both on the same item? Yes. They're, they're both reports. Okay. There's no other. Really well, so so we don't we don't even need to vote on them. They're just reports. No, so we got to sign them. I have an affidavit that I gave it to you. Happy deal. Okay. The first is the uh, report for January 2020, the monthly report. I'm not going to read over the codes, but as you can see we're doing pretty well right now. And we have the debt to owe as well. All right, and I have my fourth quarter investment report that ended uh, December 31st, 2019. And on the report, as you can see, I have the interest broken down by month, October, November, December. And then I have a total with the first, second, and third quarters, and then I have an interest year to date. These CDs are maintained at Texas Bank, which is our depository bank. The CDs are paid at a rate of 75% of the 13-week T-bill for Texas Depository Bank contract. And these funds were invested and maintained in accordance with Brown County Investment Policy and in accordance with Chapter 2256.006 of the Public Funds Investment Act regarding safety, liquidity, and yield. And I would just like to point out that last year, our general fund earned $143,850.42. And overall, in all the funds I have invested, we've earned $205,932.51. Outstanding. 
I'll make a motion we approve both of the. Do you want to do that? There's no action. We have to on this one. We've always approved this one. Okay. Motion and a second. Okay. Well, uh, I'll make a motion we approve the, the, the monthly financial report and the quarterly investment report. Okay. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you, ma'am. All in, uh, any further discussion? Two do I need to sign this? Yes. All in favor? All right. Passes unanimously. Good job, I am. I sent Ann a message the other day that we don't always, same thing with, I was talking to, about with Dave, that Ann's in her own little building over there, and we don't always think to tell Ann and her staff thank you. They work very hard, especially on uh, human resource issues, which take up a lot of their time. I especially appreciate your check. Every month, right? <laughs> yes. All right. Item number five is uh, consideration approval payment of any bills as needed. I'm trying. I'm practicing to be an auctioneer. All right. Well, good luck. Yeah. Some speed reading. All right. Should you take a look at your bills? I have mine. So I didn't have any. Nothing left out of me. All right, we have a motion and a second to pay the bills. Do we have any further discussion? Uh, we need to sign an original one. All right, uh, all in favor? We'll use yours. You'll be fine. You know, there are some counties that have enacted a $7 signature fee every time the judge or commissioner signs something. $7. Can you imagine what an airport? We're always signing stuff back here. I don't know who would pay that seven dollars. I guess that's uh, for other things. So, all right, uh, item number six is uh, uh, our consent agenda: consideration approval uh, of all or individual appropriate in the following. So, we're going to go immediately to item number six A, which is the dreaded elevator report. So, uh, we have a, a representative is. Uh, how do I pronounce it? Tissencrop. Tissencrop. See, I, I just said Tyson. Tissencrop. <laughs> uh, which is apparently about the only people who will work on an elevator of that age anymore. Uh, so he's here to tell us what he can do to try and get the thing running again. Morning. And you are? Rick Russell. Okay. Rick, take on these. Start on both sides. So with the age of this elevator, I worked on this thing years ago. When I was back in the field, so. Now you're you're with the company that bought the company that bought the company that installed it, right? Dover Elevator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Tissen and Tissen bought out Dover, so it's it's pretty much original. Um, but what we're having issues with is the door, the main mounting bracket on the door where it gets to the door operator. Years ago, it took some kind of trauma hit. Broke the welds on top of the door. I came down here, welded the thing, welded the blocks back up on top of it. Um, we're back to the same point to where now we're breaking outside the welds and the door has to be replaced. And we'd be welding on top of welds. So right. Uh, yes, yeah, so because the, of the probability yeah. of injury, we just closed it down. Every time you weld something like that, that weak place just moved. Yes, yeah, sir, just moved down. And you can't play, I mean, I, I don't know what we're talking I like to see it, but something you can't play it over. Well, if that thing right, uh, it's right. It's I can. Somewhat show it to you. Um, it's kind of hard access wise to get to it. Um, in looking at this, I came down last week and looked at everything else. Now, the other issue we have is the door operator on top of the car that actually runs the mechanism that runs the doors. It's coming apart. I mean, it's got a piece of channel iron that's holding this thing together. It's been repaired two or three times. I don't know. It seems like to me that I can't remember exactly what it was, but it seems like this door got swung out years ago and kind of hammered, you know, so if, as, as the elevator was coming down, it kind of pushed up the header and kind of put everything in a bind. So over the years, it just gets weaker and all the all the moving components on the door are starting to break down. Well, of course, as a, as a courthouse, we have, you know, it's the primary purpose is convenience, uh, especially for our disabled people who have trouble with stairs. But uh, this is a government building. One of our highest priorities is public safety as well. So what are we looking at to get it running to where it will pose uh, the least amount of probable harm to anyone? I think right now um, the proposal you have right there is for a door and that also is putting a new infrared door edge on it. So right now you have a mechanical door edge that you physically have to hit to reopen the doors. The infrared is 
you know, a minor upgrade, but a, a safety upgrade um, that you can, you know, throw a business card in there and reopen the doors. So you're not physically having to touch them. So this 12668 figure, of course, we don't pay taxes. Right. So we would subtract the 900 right. from that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. That's coming. That's cheaper than what we talked about when you were here last. So that makes me happy. Well, that's the rest of the elevator. I mean, you talk about the. Door. So this is something we talked about a little bit the other day. Um, you know, here's another proposal y'all can pass around. Now this is to add to change the door operator. So at this point, it's something that we really need to put in the cap budget to do a modernization on the elevator and bring it up to code. Okay, so. Once we bring it up to code, the safety aspect, as well as the longevity and reliability and the safety factor all comes into play. So what's, what's the cost on that, projected cost on that? I, projected cost, I would say. If we just want to go ahead and do it now yeah, while you're working on it, what, what what are we looking at? We're looking at, I'm going to say right probably around 75000 Wow. That's what you told me to replace the whole car, the yes. everything. Yes, sir. Is that so, what you're talking about doing? Right. That's the controls and everything. This one right here with the dual operator. If you change the doors as well as the door operator, this door operator is, is a vital piece of the, the elevator, obviously. It opens and closes the doors. Um, if you do the upgrade on this, it's something that we can work with down the road when y'all cap plan for to change the elevator, the old the whole thing out. You okay. can use salvage these parts. So at that point in time it'd be yeah, it'd be seventy five thousand minus Right. What we, what we spend here today. Right. All right. Correct. So we got to uh, remember that we get to that point, we're going to bid out. So, I mean, yeah, maybe exactly. It may not be the well, one that does it, so it would be compatible. What, what it's, about, it's still compatible. That's the yeah. good thing is the, the operator that's on that second proposal is well, the universal. We're, we're about to start our budget season again, so okay. we'll keep that in mind. Uh, one of my priorities is all, we're also looking at we've got to get a unified phone system. We, we can't even transfer phone calls, our phone system, so I ended up. So... I don't know that we'd come up with 75000 this fiscal year to, right. to, to replace the whole thing, but I'm certainly in favor of uh, getting uh, the $12,000, or actually 12000 closer to 11000 if you take the taxes out. Right. Did y'all see that? There's $900 in taxes. Uh, I think that's, in, that, that's actually cheaper than what I was expecting, and I've taken the liberty to ask around uh, to a few other county judges, too, and they were all they, their projections were much higher than that. So, so what about on the, like if later on down the road the new elevator yeah, car, you still have the same cylinder lift and all that? that yes, sir. We can, our roof really won't stay the one that's got to be suspended. Right. Yeah. So what we'll do on a on a mod, what we call a modernization, we'll come in, we'll change the, the controls, the fixtures, anything that's, that's mechanical, um, anything that, you know, takes pressure from, from one to... Uh, passengers or whatever, some buttons, you know, the lights, all that kind of stuff is, is new. The cab shell will remain the same, and then the cylinder and the rails and all the stuff, the primary stuff that actually runs, that will remain the same. You're, you're just changing out door controls and, and all that good stuff. You had a question, Larry? So what's the time frame of getting this thing fixed? So there's time frame basically is getting, getting a senior signature on this, so we're looking at like Two weeks, I think, is a turnaround time on trying to get a door built and get a door out here. Okay, you have to just build one because they're not even after our right. it. Uh, also, you can check in and see how seriously there's a leak down there in that cylinder. And they keep it thin that way. I know for 13 years, one of the babies has been here that long. Right. It's be a good time to address it. Then. Well, yeah, and look at it. I mean, if it's having to take that cylinder out and repack it, well, that's we're talking several weeks waiting on it, right? Right. So, but if he's a line or something, or I can take a look at it when we're here. Okay. Um, that was my question. That mean, well, you, you already looked at the whole elevator. I looked at basically. I didn't look. I wasn't aware of the yeah. leak. I looked at the car top and I looked at the doors, which is the the problem that we're having with it at this point. The rest of it, the door controls in there. I mean, the controller and all that, the tank unit, the pump, all that stuff, is you know pretty generic. I'm going to say generic for lack of better terms, but it's pretty generic because we have a bunch of the same units all over the state of Texas. Right. So, um, okay, well, you've, you've submitted us two proposals here for to, to alleviate any confusion. I've just written A and B on them. So the first one, A, 
is the uh, 12668 and, of course, minus the 938 in taxes. Yes, sir. And B is a little more expensive, 15204, and I, it doesn't show whether that includes taxes or, it, uh, didn't it. or not. I would imagine it probably does since most of your work is done on sure. private businesses. Yes, sir. I'll, and B included what else? B, okay, so these are these are two separate proposals. One is, proposal A is for the door and the door edge to get us up and going. B is to add the new door operator that controls the door and the door edge. So that's the, extra, <coughs> that's the extra $3,000 difference? Well, it, it, like I said, it's two proposals. So right, right. one is 11,000, one, so it, putting together is 25. Oh, I got you. Right. Okay. So we can't go with either or. We've got to go with yeah. You can go with either or. Just either the lesser or we can add on the, but you can't do B without A is what you're saying. Correct. Okay, I understand. Yes, sir. What yeah, do you, a, what a do you, is the main problem. B is the problem I found when I came right. down to look at problem yeah, that door operator, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So together we're looking at around, uh, well, under th about 27, 26, 27 rounded. Uh, what do you recommend to us? It's kind of what, it, looking at the door operator, it's going to be a problem right. uh, sooner or later. So, I mean, if we don't, if we replace the doors today and put a door edge on it, you know, we might turn around and run with a new set of doors on there and then a month down the road have a problem with the door operator coming back apart. And then going back in there to fix it might cost even more. Right. Then. Yes, sir. What do you think, Larry? I'm just, I, if I'm going to fix something, I want to fix it right. I want to do it right the first time. You know. I would love to have had a second opinion, but we've got a time problem here. Too. Well, that and hardly anybody works on the thing. Finding yeah, somebody it's, to it's come a, out and... It's an antiquated system. Right. And from, from what I'm told, everybody, or if we called to ask somebody to come out and give a test, they'd say to call this company. That they don't they don't want to do it. We're actually the one that maintains it, too. So, I mean... Uh, okay. So, so by adding B... To it, how much more time does that add to it? It doesn't. Just about a about a day. I think that that door operator should be about a week turnaround. It's actually a quicker turnaround lead time on it than it would actually wait on the door. <coughs> Where, where's the money? We got the money. We're um, gonna have to find it somewhere. I'm not gonna climb it. That hand <laughs> 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 That's you know. I mean. We yes, we have, have budgeted in other building repairs under the courthouse budget. We have. Uh, is that special projects or under just general? It's repairs? just under general other building repairs. General. Because we cut the special projects in half last, yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. No, so. it's not a special. Okay. Project. All right. Good deal. And, and you know we we maintain a pretty good surplus too. If we got in the bind, we could get some of that. Oh yeah, we're we're not hurt. Commissioner Shaw, what do you think? I'm, I'm fixing it. Would you like to make a motion? You talking about doing A and B? Is that yes. what you're saying? Yeah. I, I mean, we're gonna do it, do it right. Being in there and not fixing everything, it needs fixing my way. Well, plus my thinking is uh, then, as he said, we can reuse this if down the line when we got to replace the entire thing. It will cost us less because we'll have already gotten this done. So I know it's like, what he's talking about about those wells. So I've got a gooseneck trailer that's, that shakes all the time, and I've welded the bows two or three times, and I'm going to break the lower bell for a weld. Yes, sir. So the the, well, the well will never break. It's, yeah, it's the well will well. never break. Well, it weakens it terribly. It's aged. Well, I, I, I'll tell you, uh, it's not a motion. I'll, I like to let y'all make the motions most of the time, but uh, I'm in favor of uh, A and B together. That's and go ahead and. The motion I made, I thought. Oh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. What is the estimated cost of A and B? Yeah, it's around. Well, I'm doing the math in my head. It's around. How much? I was going to say 27. I wasn't too far off. That were the taxes minus. 11,730 and No, and then that there's 938. They've got taxes. Oh, is that without it? Okay. All right. So, so would you mind? Would you like to amend your motion to say as long as it doesn't go over, say, 27,000? Right. Yeah, that's right. If, it, if you got to go over that, you need to come back and talk to us until the swap. I'll check with Sean and find out, make sure yeah, the taxes are right. Maybe you can do it cheaper. Yeah. Exactly. You can do it. Do you want a second? What is your name? I, I uh, Richard. We need a second. 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 Well, I'll second. I didn't ever hear All that. right, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, Commissioner Charles. Who made the second? Larry. Larry. And then Commissioner Charles amended his motion to where if it goes over $27,000, you need to come back and talk to us and tell us what's happening. Otherwise, get it fixed as quick as you can. <laughs> we, don't, we sure don't expect you to work for nothing but work you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
Yeah. We got to watch out for the public money. Well, I'm afraid to say, you fix it right, but don't spend no money. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. All right, all in favor? Carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. Right, thank okay, you. we'll get, get started as soon as you possibly can. Sure, we'll. I'm going to expect you after lunch. Like, as a matter of fact, go outside and get your tool belt and go ahead and come back in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I have number six B. Uh, uh, somebody covering that for him. Uh, I don't Texas have paper sign here, but that's the uh, it's Texas Independence Fireworks, according to what Amy found. Right. Let me read the motion. I, don't, I wasn't sure if we were going to go forward with it or not, since he's not here. Sponsored by Commissioner Worley, who's unfortunately not with us today. Uh, consideration and possible approval of action regarding fireworks for uh, Texas Independence Day. That's that's. Do we want to table this, or are we out of time? We're out of time, so we got to do it today. Uh, can we go ahead and adopt it, and then you have the form and bring it to us to sign later, since we don't have it here? All right. What are your thoughts? We'll have to adopt to allow it. That's right. Right. Yeah. I don't see any point in not allowing it. Okay. That's the county and ranges also. Okay. So you make a motion. I would make a motion that we uh, do allow the the fireworks to take place on Texas Independence Day. I think that's excellent. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. You with us, Sharon? Yes. I just check in with you every now and then. You never look up, so I'm not sure. Right. <laughs> all right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, all right, all in favor? All right, we got that. Sheriff, we're, we're trying to get down to you as quick as we can. Uh, oh, and I forgot about Bob. Where is uh, Bob? They have you listed the very last one, so we're going to... All right, that was 6B. I'm going to start writing over these so I know what they are. Uh, 6C, that is Commissioner Kelton discussion that, uh, regarding uh, position on the burn ban. I'm good with leaving it off for now, if y'all are. I'm good with it. No action. Okay, so no action on 6C. All right, now I'm going to skip down to 6M. Mr. Contreras, come up here and give us some good news regarding consideration and possible approval of allocation of Brown County share of Brown County's plural share of unclaimed property from uh, uh, capital credits. This is good news. Yeah, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, this, Hi, uh, really, this should be pretty short. We uh, applied, you all did, applied for capital credits last August, and uh, we had never done that before. Come January 1st, we didn't have any news, so we double-checked with the, uh, the comp controller, and it turns out that the check should have been cut last August. And so now we do have a check for these are the 2018 credits in the amount of $20,628.68. So, so $20,000 we didn't have before. Yes, sir. I'm but sure to pay for <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, We'll get the file again here in the next few weeks and get another check for last year's. So this is looking good. Every year that I've done our research, we've increased from 3000 in 2013 to what we have now, this is for 2018. So for, to read it into the record, uh, this is this award amount is 20628 and 68 cents. Uh, but there's a catch, and Mr. Contreras is going to tell us what the law allows us to spend that money yes, on. Sir, if you have your package, you'll see the government code. But uh, there are only eight broad areas where we can spend this money. And if you look there, they can be used for uh, state or local economic development. Uh, smaller disadvantaged business development. You can read there's quite a few there. But I thought that uh, I would recommend that you, I haven't given it any thought, that possibly you could divide these proceeds between uh, three organizations in our county. One is the public library where they have literacy programs. Two is CASA that advocates for kids. And three is for the Child Advocacy Center that works with kids also. So those are, those are areas that are approved. And that would get this money out of the way so we can apply for our next uh, our next check. And you work, you speak to each of these uh, uh, in, in our office. Bob is our point of contact for each of these uh, nonprofits. Are these three the ones that you, you recommend to us? Yes, sir, and, and they can certainly use some money. I think we already, uh, you, you all fund the public library. As we, I know. we do. And you give money to classes. I wish we gave them more, but we give them more we can afford. So uh, anyway, that'll take care of this. And then for the next check, you'll have to be looking. We, again, we have no idea how much it will be, but it has appeared to grow for the last seven years every year. Okay, so for the record, uh, again, to make sure everybody understood, you recommend we go with uh, dividing it three ways uh, to the library, to the literacy program, 
the second would be for uh, the child advocacy program and then uh, the last would be uh, oh, I'm sorry uh, involvement application oh uh, promotion of the arts like the lyric theater is that what you're talking about well, right I'm, but I'm not recommending that we give it to them I'm okay. not recommending with this check that we go with CASA, CASA. The Children's Child Advocacy Center and the public library Okay, I just didn't see CASA on here. So. Yeah, CASA is a court appointed special Right, right, right. We, we already say. give those all money in our budget. We do every year. We don't give them a lot, but we yeah. give them some. But we either, we've got, we're very little. So we've got the basic night right now. Who we give it well, to? You, you do not, sir. You can take all the time. Yeah. We can wait you know, and study yeah, it. I, mean, I don't have that list. We've got a lot of people that want money, but we've got a general appointed. Well, but, you know, like, yeah, I mean, I, I, right now, I've, you know, the animal shelter is in a tough situation, but they're not one of them that we're allowed to give this to. It's very specific right. as to who it permits. So okay. it's not like it's not like any nonprofit. It's it's only those listed. The deterioration of our I'm say we've got a little time to talk about who we're going to give it to. Okay, so, well, then I would need a motion to accept the check and then uh, uh, with the designate, including the motion that we'll come back later and, and decide how we want to. I'd like to accept the check from unclaimed credit for counties. Yeah, this is the uh, comptroller of public accounts. Mm -hmm. with, the, with the caveat. With the, a deal on it that we'll talk about who we're going to give it to later. Yes, sir. It's the Texas comptroller of public accounts. Okay. okay. Sure. We have a second? Yeah. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? It's excellent, good news, excellent news, Bob. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Hope to have another That may tell us what we can, what our limits are and what we can use it for, but it's better than uh, nothing. That's true. Thank so, you. all right, all in favor? Okay, carries unanimously. Thank you, Bob. I think that's something that Rob brought to our attention. I didn't even know about. It. Right, right. And uh, he's right on top of another. See, we're behind in what we get, so he's. We're going to be getting another check here very quickly. Good job, Bob. Thank uh, you, Bob. Okay. All right, uh, we'll go back up to six E. Larry Franks. Larry, are you out there? Larry, come on down. Oh, six. Out there. <laughs> six. six E is in Edward. Six E, okay. Election administrator Larry Franks would like to discuss uh, the Democrat and the Republic notice of a general primary election. Uh, yeah, we have an election coming up March third. Really? Uh, it will be the primary elections for this cycle. Uh, this will be the presidential cycle. So we've also opened two fourteen for you. Um, I don't table move. Go ahead. Anyway, um, so uh, I've signed a contract with uh, both parties, Democrat and Republican Party, to hold a joint election in this right here. Um, the notice of the election is, has been published by the parties. It's not our responsibility this time. It's the party's responsibility. I did look in the bulletin and I saw the Democrat notice on Sunday, I think it was, and I think the Republican is going to come out Wednesday. But both parties are responsible for their own notices of election. And I built it for them anyway. Uh, it has all 16 polling locations. Any changes in those from last time? Negative, sir. Uh, early voting? Not as long as the uh, polling. It's just the contract, uh, and it's signed. By the uh, Democrat Party, the contracting officers, and the Republican. If, if Larry approves it, I'm, I'm good with that. He did. Yeah, they, that was one of the things that we discussed at the SOS conference, uh, Secretary of State, Texas Election Law Conference, is that apparently they're transferring more responsibility to the election administrator. So they said election administrators can sign the contracts. I didn't think to come ask you if I was. Does it need to be approved? Mm -hmm. Does it need to be approved? No. You're just presenting. Yes. Okay. You're right. Um, All right, and you got another one, six F. Well, uh, the one more discussion. Uh, yeah, let me let me get it into the record though. Consideration of okay. possible approval of emergency appointment of an election judge. Yes, sir. Uh, early voting will start the 18th and will run continuously through the 28th. We will have Saturday and Sunday voting in early voting. Saturday will be 8 to 5, Sunday will be noon to 5. Um, in that, I've had, well, we're opening Precinct 214 because it's a presidential election year. Uh, Miss Betty Chambers <coughs> is the person who I'd like to have appointed as the judge for uh, Pleasant Grove 
and Holder, and then we've lost. Uh, I've lost my mind. But anyway, uh, the the judge for 411 has moved uh, to Abilene, so I had to come up with Robert McLean has accepted uh, to be the judge for Cockett Avenue Baptist Church, Precinct 4. It's a busy spot. It is, sir. Robert and McLean's a good man. He is. He just doesn't know what he's getting into. <laughs> yeah. And Betty Chambers is from Precinct 4. 214. Robert Road. Robert's not going to talk to us after this. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a mouthpiece. Those are your emergency ones. Those are your emergency ones. Right. Those are the Okay. Uh, would anybody like to make a motion to approve the appointment of the emergency appointment of the election judges recommended by Mr. Frank? I'll make a question for you. Bet. Yes. The other day we had somebody come out here stuck some campaign signs and for while dinner was going on, that's not legal, is it? On the courthouse? It's, it's up to the courthouse. It's, I'm, I'm not the sign police. The Texas Ethics Commission says, you know, as long as the courthouse is not a polling location, they can post them, but they should get permission from the courthouse. Did they, they didn't get permission from me. They, you, me you, know. you? No. You? You get to allow them all or none. Huh? First time hearing about it. They got pulled up pretty They was there for about a... Who was it? Uh, I don't remember. Huh? Well, there's like 11 people running for Congress, yeah, well, so it's probably... I can't remember. Yeah. But it'd be all or none if you were to... Yeah. 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 yeah, if you allow one, you got to allow them all. Yeah. Well, you know, they, we did have that... They had that forum last week. I, I was afraid that... No, it was before that. Was it before that? I was afraid maybe some people stuck them in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's happened before. But. Texas Ethics Commission is the one that really rules over right. posting of signs, and because the courthouse is not the polling location, that one area that frees it up, polling wasn't incurring, right. so that frees it up. Unlike when you were over at the Adam Street, where they had to, we had to stand on the sidewalk and exactly so. at the, side of the 150 foot. But radius. even the polling place, it's like. So many feet before they can put them out. Outside of 100, 100, 100 feet. 100 feet. 100, yes, sir. All right. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Do we approve the two election judges presented by Larry Frank? Yes, sir. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I forget the names. Mr. McLean and Miss uh, Chambers. 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 Uh, so we have a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? We're, we're going to be all unanimous on everything today. We're on track. Skip D. You know you skip D. Did I skip D because I haven't marked out? No, you didn't. What was D? Did I skip you, Wayne? I'm sorry. Let's go back up to 6D. <laughs> Commissioner Wayne Shaw, uh, consideration possible approval of action to install a private line on County Road 323 uh, by Zephyr Water Supply. And my apologies. I had to mark out. It's no big deal. Uh, one thing I'd like to say about, about the elevator deal before we start, I think being if we just did that one thing at one time and something happened to it that messed up, the other, that might implicate our warranties, right, somewhere or another. There could be some implications there. Yes, sir. So, okay, so that will make people feel better about going on and doing both of them. I hope it does. You're still here? I thought she was out getting your tool belt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like it also because it kind of allows us to do it in stages. That's right. That's it. But... Uh, you know, if that part we we didn't do that door actuator that that's breaking too. If something happened to it to cause the other mess up the new part, well, there you know there could be some implications. What day was the elevator shut down last week? Monday. Oh, it's been down all week. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. All right. Would anybody like to make a motion on Commissioner Shaw's private line? Oh, well, yeah, I'll just, tell you where it was. <laughs> it's uh, Zephyr Water, and it's on County Road 323, and it is a cut. And, of course, that's a Palichi Road, so no problem there, and they always do good work, so it'll be uh, done up to county specs. So I'll make a motion to approve this Zephyr Water's uh, so, in, in, installation of a private line. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? <laughs> what am I signing? This is the very bottom. Huh? This is the very, very bottom. What am I signing? You're signing to approve 
Okay, so we're oh okay, so we're up to the current. Usually the papers come through two or three items behind. Well, he's got the other. <laughs> okay, you got all of it. You got it all now. All right, so just that one spot. So you need my signature. All right, good deal. All right, item number six G is in George. Uh, uh, Christine would like the tax assessor collector. Are you out there? Oh, there you are. She would like to talk to us about possible approval of employee changes. Mine's easy. I just have a replacement employee. Um, her name is Barbara Drews. She starts today. Who, who left? I'm sorry? Who left that you had a vacancy? Robbie Hughes. Oh. Her last day was June. Just at the starting. Barbara Drews. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's the starting salary, we don't even need to vote on it, but we can if we want. The only time we have to approve it is if you ask for more money. I have to bring it. I have approved. I have every time. So. Yeah, fine with me. I'll give you my we found uh, we found just about a year and a half ago uh, the court has no authority whatsoever on who an elected official employs. Yeah, just They'll, the salary. Just, just the salary. So as long as you're not asking for more money than what it already was, but we'll go ahead and vote on it anyway. Well, there's nice to be apprised what's going on. Yeah, here. it is. I appreciate it. So would somebody like to make a motion for her? Yes. Make a motion we approve her employee change. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Approved unanimously. We just wanted you to make, make sure you understood that we we weren't trying to infringe on. Oh, I absolutely know how that works. <laughs> Sheriff. Now, uh, I would like to say the next 30 minutes is going to be the Van Teel hour. Because well, it's certainly it's not it's certainly it's not going to. If it is, he's fired. <laughs> Certainly, it's going to go over 30 minutes, but uh, like the Oscars last night. All right, 6H is in hearing. Van Teel, our honorable sheriff, consideration approval of authorization to purchase. Uh, I'm sorry, I have notes written over what I'm trying to read here. Uh, equipment for the SWAT team. So it's the team, not the van. Right. So the van's in good shape. Yes, we're, we're doing good with vans. So now we just need stuff for the troops. Right. And what this piece of equipment is, it's going to be two pieces of equipment, and I'm wanting to purchase it out of my donation fund. It's going to be a sniper rifle uh, with a uh, spotting scope. We're wanting to purchase a, a Tika 2-3 by TAC A1 bolt action 308, 308 Winchester rifle. Uh, it's got some special techniques and extra equipment with it, but the price of it is $1,649.99. And the scope for that is going to be a Trigicon AccuPoint 4 by 24 by 50. Uh, with green dot 30 millimeter tube and the price of the scope is twelve hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents so the to total purchase i'm wanting to make out of the donation account two thousand one hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety eight cents can we ask what your balance is oh wow well, it's up around 50. okay so no problem at all covering it so it's just you'll a sniper rifle on the scope yes ma'am you'll have to get any money left commissioner trey we can get after i show you all how to shoot that yeah, thing. My question is why Trigicon? Oh, uh, that's the one that my guys uh, did a lot of that's research. They like on. that mm -hmm. over a night force. It's a, it actually made our list, but not cool. the, the top people. All right, anybody? Yeah, you're the gun guy, Larry. I'll make a motion. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it very often, but there's only four of us here, so I'll make a motion to allow the sheriff to approve his or to, to uh, approve the sheriff's purchasing the sniper rifle and the, the scope and accessories to go with it for a total of how much again? $2,199.98. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Nope. All right. Uh, all in favor? Passage unanimously. All right. Next up. Uh, well, let me right over that one. Sheriff again. Yep, sure. Well, he's up here for a while now. Well, Sheriff again, consideration, possible approval, of authorization to accept donations. No, uh, I have a check in the amount of eighty dollars from Blevins Body Shop. I would like authorization to accept it. You right. got Tommy Blevins to part with money? I did. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the <laughs> donation to the Sheriff's Department. Second. I'm kidding. Tommy's a great guy. All right. So we have a motion and a second. We have any further discussion? on the acceptance of the donation. All in favor? All right. Mr. Blevins is a great supporter. He is yes, a he fantastic is. man, isn't he? Very good guy. Yeah. Item number J, 6J, is uh, the county sheriff consideration of possible approval uh oh of employee changes. 
It's um, never ending over there, is it? Right, that's correct. This is going to be a jail position. I've had four openings for quite a while, or actually six openings, and we're slowly building back up. But uh, I've hired Alex Mackey at the rate of 32000 per year, and he's filling the position that we've had open since uh, since November the 24th. So that's how far behind we are on getting that, qualified personnel. That is a starting salary? Yes, sir. Starting salary of 32000 is that the only one? That's it. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, sheriff's personnel changes. Second. Second. Well, Shaw got it. Give it to Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right, so item number 6K, uh, Does do we have to accept this, Sheriff, or is this just a report? I don't, don't think you'll have to accept it. Okay, because I know the racial profiling, there's some stipulations with that. So uh, Sheriff Hill is going to present uh, his racial racial profiling report, and I do believe you're right, even though it's just a report, I believe the statute that created that said we have to approve it. I know I have to present it to you. I'm required by state law to do a, an annual racial profiling report. One of them goes to the Texas Commission of Law Enforcement, and the other ones I present to the Commissioner's Court. Okay. Uh, just to briefly go over that, uh, the racial profiling report contains our policies and procedures for uh, racial profiling. Uh, but in a report, we made 1,741 traffic stops. 582 of those were female. 1,159 were male. The race or ethnicity, 100 were black. 12 were Asian or Pacific Islander. 1,322 were Hispanic, Latino, 307 were white, and zero were Alaskan, what was the, American. Can you, Anglo again, what was that? Anglo. White. White. White, the, the white is 307. 307. 307. Okay. Uh, the race or ethnicity known prior to the traffic stop, that means if, if we knew what race a person was pulling over prior to doing that, and we have to report on that too. Uh, 73 of those, we did know what the race was. 1,668, we did not know what the race or ethnicity was at the time. Uh, the reason for the stop, violation of the law is 78. Pre-existing knowledge, uh, pretext stop is 49. Moving traffic violation, 1,026. Vehicle traffic violation, 5, 588, I'm sorry. The locations for the stops, 329 were on the city street, 275 were U.S. Highway, 476 were a county road, 629 was a state highway, and 40 were private property or other locations. Uh, another area I have to report on is the searches. Was a search conducted? Yes, for 185, no for 1,556. Reason for the search, 81, we had consent, 14, we saw contraband, 85, we had probable cause, and inventory and subject to arrest is two. Uh, incident to arrest is three. Was contraband discovered? Yes, on 107 of those searches, no on 78. The description of the contraband, 78 was drugs, zero currency, two weapons, 16 alcohol, zero stolen property, and 11 for other. Now the results of the stops that we've made, 1,122 of those traffic stops were verbal warnings, 168 was written warnings, 314 was citations, zero written warning and arrest, zero citation and arrest, and then 137 arrests out of those traffic stops. Arrest based on violation of the penal code was 94, violation of traffic law was 27, violation of ordinance and resolutions is one, outstanding warrants is 15. And then the last reporting uh, category was physical force resulting in bodily injury used during the stop. Zero for yes, 1,741 for no. So that is my report that I have filed with the Texas oh, Commission. The paperwork for stopping somebody is astronomical, isn't it? <laughs> yes, does, that, does that fall within the guidelines? Everything look good if you have to compare that to the right, guidelines? I see no issues of uh, yeah, so anything I, we need to be concerned about. I don't see either. I'll make a motion we accept the sheriff's racial profiling report. And that sheriff, that, that by the way, for the public, that report is made, is available. 
for anyone in the public that would like a copy of it. <laughs> and the media as well, if you'd like a printout of it. So I, I make a motion. Do I have a second? I would have second it. <laughs> we, have a, we have a motion and a second. Do we have uh, any further discussion? No? All in favor? Passes unanimously. And the last one is uh, the Sheriff's Jail Report, item number uh, 6. Uh, L. Sheriff, go ahead. Uh, we currently have 171 inmates, with 11 of those being contract inmates. How many was the total? 171. 171. We're up a little bit. Won't we pass this round? Or just okay. Okay. Remind, the, remind us so the public can hear what we're paid per day for contract inmates. Uh, $40. All, right. All right, and that last one doesn't require a vote. It's information purposes only. So with that, uh, I want to make sure I didn't skip anybody or anything. I think you got them all. That was a long agenda. All right, so uh, with that, I will declare us adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I need to see Don King before he leaves. Don King.